I am so pleased that uh, the person who is sitting right opposite me now is my guest who really does not need much of an introduction at all because for six decades she's captivated fans all over the world with her soulful voice. Her hits include Amoureuse, I've Got the Music, In Me and of course Don't Go Breaking My Heart which she released in 1976 along with a certain Mr Elton John. But as I'm sure she's about to tell us, despite all of that success, she's never forgotten her Yorkshire roots, have you, Kiki mm, D? No, they wouldn't let me. Because, <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you were a young Yorkshire lass, yeah. 16, when you went into the music industry. Yeah, this this yeah. was your ambition, was it? Oh, totally. I was very driven, you know, when I was 14. <laughs> My dad and I drove down to London from Bradford uh, in 63, the same year that Scylla went to London. Mm -hmm. And um, got the audition, got the record deal, and, uh, you know, had lots of experiences. I sang with Dusty, doing backing vocals. Yeah. And Dusty Springfield, that yeah. is, for the generation that have never heard of her. Yeah, who's Dusty? Sadly. Yeah, <laughs> yeah I know. <laughs> Yeah, and then ten years later, I got hit with Elton John's company. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, we have to talk about Elton a bit, because, of course, tonight he's making what, what is being billed as his last ever public appearance in Britain as part of the, the Elton John farewell tour, because he's going right. to headline at Glastonbury. Yes. Um, now, you, you had Don't Go Breaking My Heart, as you say, which was this huge hit for you. Are, you. are you sad not to be there on stage with him tonight? To be honest, I'm quite relieved in this heat. <laughs> I didn't get the call, but, you know, I did Dodger Stadium last November to yeah. 55,000 people. Yeah. That was the North American farewell, and it was so wonderful. I saw my old friends when I was in L.A. a lot in the 70s, doing the rock star thing, you know. Yeah. And, uh, it was, and the audience were fantastic, and when I came on, they went, where? And then jo I met Joni Mitchell backstage, which yeah. was now, come on, Kiki, tell me, I mean, because none of us watching this programme will have had the experience of walking out onto a stage and oh seeing 65,000 people in front of us no. wanting to... What is that like? Well, you know, I did two stadium tours around America with Elton in the 70s. Yeah. So I got used to the police escorts to the stadiums, you know, and, and the Starship, which was a rock and roll uh, aeroplane that the Stones and Elton used to use. What you do is you do a date and you'd stay in one city for a week and do all the dates around that city, <clears throat> excuse me, and then the plane would go on somewhere else. So you didn't have to move around every day. So rock and roll. The one silly thing I remember is on the, the sort of refreshment bar they had in those days, 73, 74, they had these packets of vitamins, you know, for all the rock and rollers to keep us all going on these long tours, you know. <laughs> I mean, the atmosphere. Um, I remember talking to Yul Brynner many years ago about what it was like when he was living with cancer to go on stage uh, and perform in The King and I. And he said always it was that wave of love that came over the headlights, yeah. of, over the footlights to him, which was like Dr. Theatre. Now, you know, you didn't have any of that to go through, but you did. I mean, I can't get over 65,000 people. Do you feel that wave of energy coming at you when you walk out and when you're performing? Well, it's a strange thing because um, I do... Uh, I have a music partner called Carmela Lugeri I've yeah. been working with for 30 years. And our music's quite progressive, although we do the old hits. But, you know, we play art centres to 200 people. Mm. And I find that much more terrifying because it's the intimacy. Really? And there's nowhere to go. You have to connect. Connection is the whole thing about our yeah. music. It's to touch people. And that, to me, to go out, walk out on, at Dodger Stadium and, you know, belt out a song for three minutes um, is much less scary. It's, it's crazy, I know, but... It's crazy. Uh, but it was, it, it was crazy. And in fact, the whole Elton experience must have been crazy, going on tour with him, with, with all the glamour and all the, the, the craziness that went with it. I gather you have... I read somewhere that you've got a pair of rhinestone-studded, platform-heeled boots I do. from that time. I do. How did they come about? <laughs> and I can still get them on, which is, which is a miracle, you know. Yeah. Well, they, everybody wore them in the 70s. Um, they're silver, and then they've got the rhinestones, and then beautiful, actually, just under the knee. And what they... And what you still they, got them? I've got them in the loft. <laughs> they make a great doorstop. <laughs> <laughs> I 
I did wear them at once at a gig with Carmelo, actually, um, just for fun, you know, and everybody yeah. went, oh, my God. But what was great about that style in the 70s was they made your legs look so long because you'd have these flared jeans, which we all wear now again. But your feet would be like, you know, this much. Your legs would be that much longer because of these raised boots. So yeah. we all look like Jerry Hall. <laughs> <laughs> well, not quite, actually. But <laughs> now, I know you are reported as saying you wanted to get away from that rock and roll lifestyle. I mean, but it was a fantastic time, wasn't it? And your parents got to get involved in it as well, didn't they? How did they take to it? Seeing, you know, my little Kiki D from Yorkshire oh, up I there know. on the stage with the big names. Well, the worst thing was when I was first Kiki D because everybody in Brett was going, what? Because you changed your name. What kind of name is that? Yeah. yeah. Kiki D. Um, but, yeah, I've got a lovely story. Have I got time yes, to tell you? Yes, you have. Plenty of time. I, I played uh, Madison Square Garden for seven nights with Elton in 76. I was doing Don't Go Back In My Heart. And uh, don't, uh, I've got the music in me. Yeah. And we had a gospel choir, and it was fantastic. So I rang my mum in Bradford, and I said, Mum, I know you and Dad have never flown, but how about flying to New York first class? Sailing for a week, s sailing home on the QE2, and, um, yeah, stay at the Waldorf Astoria for a week, you know. And there was a bit of a pause, and she said, well, we would love, but we booked our caravan holiday that week. <laughs> I love did my mum. Did she mom. come? She did come in the end. <laughs> but you see, that's the kind of roots I've got, and I think that's held me in really good stead. Yeah. You know. Yeah, but you did say you, you didn't want that rock and roll lifestyle. I mean, it was glamorous, it was fun. You were touring the world with the great names in music at that time. Yeah. And actually, just thinking about it, you were mentioning there Scylla and Dusty. Yeah. And Scylla Black, Dusty Springfield. Mm. There weren't too many women around at that time headlining as pop singers, were there? You, you were one of a, a very small and elite group of women, weren't you? Did that make it really tough for you in the music industry? Well, there were less... Mm, Less artists, and you had to have a record deal to record. Mm. Of course, now everybody can record in their back room and, you know, get a record deal and whatever. But and I can't keep up with so many new artists. There's always great singers. Even, you know, nowadays mm. there's still great singers out there. Um, I forgot what you asked me. I'm, I I'm having so much fun. <laughs> <laughs> I was asking about what it was like to be one of that small elite oh, group. Yeah. Of, of top-liner women singers, along with Scylla and Dusty and, and the rest of them. Well, you were just a very small group, weren't you? We were, actually. That's, that's true, in a way. I mean, I didn't get a hit until 73. And at the time, I was a bit, oh, I want a hit, you know, yeah. <laughs> being young. And, but it worked out well in the end, because I'd kind of got a bit of experience under my belt mm -hmm. before Amoureuse hit the charts. And I always say to my audiences, you know, it's so wonderful to get your first hit record with a beautiful, timeless song, because mm. it might not have been. Yes. But, do, I mean, were you all great mates as well? Did you sort of talk to each other? Did you sort of share experiences and share, share stories? Mm. I didn't know... Um, I didn't know... Um, Scylla that well, but I did not met all the girls and, mm. and we were all kind of supportive, really we were. And Dusty was the one that I, I really got to know because we had the same manager. Yes. And I, there's a beautiful song she recorded called Some of Your Loving by Carole King in 64. <clears throat> I've got a frog today, sorry. And uh, I sang backups on that and I think it's one of the best vocals she did. It's beautiful, you know. So I was so starstruck because I do love her voice to this mm. day, you know. Mm. But you did get away from the, the, the sort of the rock and roll life. How did you manage that? How did you do it? Well, I think it's just evolution. You know, I, I got to a certain age where I thought I've been chasing this stardom dream since I was 16, you know, and it was wearing thin, actually. Mm. I thought I want to do... I want to do what I want to do. I want to try new things. I want to move on, move forward. Because the artists I love do, like Robert Plant, people like that, they're always experimenting, doing new things. Um, so I grew out of it. And also, when you're older, of course, now I only do two shows consecutively in a week because I give so much to the audience. Uh, there's just two of us on stage. that I, I feel I can't do the third show. I can't do as good a job. So it's my evolution, you know, that's mm. the way it's gone. What, what were your dreams as that little girl in Yorkshire? What did you see? What did you want at that stage? What, what were the ambitions? I think, uh, you know, it's so different now because stardom is, well, that's a whole subject, isn't it? Yeah. You know, people want to be stars, but 
I wanted to... And they don't always necessarily have the talent to go with it, do they? But you clearly did. I had something. I knew I, knew I had something. I sensed. And I, to be honest, um, I'll be really honest, my dad was a very frustrated man. He tried ventures. He didn't get to put them into fruition. And, and I was doing it for my dad for a long time because mm -hmm. I adored him, you know. And I wanted to... I wanted to make it and be known, mm. you know, as a young girl. Yeah. Well, that was the ambition. What was it then that made you realise, actually, that's not what I want out of life? There must have been a trigger, was there? Something that said, you know, you were well known. You, you still are, but, you know, I mean, the name Kiki D, I mean, everybody still knows exactly who you are. But you were at the top of your profession. To, to switch that off, or even if not to switch it off, but to, to, to run it down and have an entirely different way of life, that must take quite a lot of deciding, did it? Because not every star at the head of their profession can say, quit while you're ahead, because I've still got a long... I mean, you were still young. You're still, yeah. you're still performing. You had this long career ahead of you. So what was the trigger that made you think that was not the ambition anymore? I just wanted to feel comfortable. And I was you were always, not comfortable then. I was always quite shy. Uh, I used to, in, you know, there'd be lots of cameras on Elton and I, and I'd be, you'd, you'd always see me kind of going behind his shoulder, you know. I was shy. Um, not that confident. And also the other thing is I, would, I didn't have one particular direction. I wasn't a country singer or a folk singer or a rock singer. I was trying all these different things. And in the end, I thought, I just want to have the freedom you know, to feel comfortable, because I am a down-to-earth person and uh, I just wanted to feel more relaxed. Does that make sense? Yes, yeah. So yeah. when you're on stage now, because you, you perform now with Carlos, as you have done for, yeah. what, 30 years yeah. or more, are you performing all your own material now? You're still writing your own songs? Yeah, we do a mix of the Kiki hits and we do songs from Kate Bush. You know, we do covers of other people's mm. songs and our original material. So it's a bit of a musical journey. And I just love it because I'm much more confident now. I, you know, I go out into the audience and we have a good giggle, and uh, it's real. Mm. You know, I think that's what it is about being over seventy. Is you know, you kind of begin to know who you are, and uh, yeah, that's that's where I am now, and I'm very happy. You're now seventy-six, aren't you? Yeah. So who is Kiki D now that wasn't Kiki D when she was sixteen or twenty or twenty-six or thirty? I don't regret anything I've done. Um, I'm very straightforward. Uh, I, I don't think I'm the greatest thing since sliced bread. But I do love the level I'm on now because, as I said earlier, it gives you freedom to mm -hmm. be creative. Because fame, I think, can be uh, a very difficult thing to work through if you're trying to create things. Mm. Because you've got pressures of record companies and all that commerciality. I don't have that anymore. No. So I'm just a simple gal from Yorkshire. <laughs> but I mean, so what would your message be to a lot of the young... Because as you say, the music industry is... is the churning over yeah. of stars, of names, of bands mm. is extraordinary, I think, now compared to what it was, say, back in the 50s and the 60s and the 70s. Yeah. Um, you know, the, a band pops up, it has a hit, it does a al couple of albums and then we never hear from them again. Yeah, it's difficult. What would you say to them? Because clearly they're not surviving within the industry for a variety of reasons, but what would your message be for them to get the kind of longevity that you and other stars like you have achieved? I think if I look back, it was a very different industry in the 60s, yeah. but I would say if you concentrate on the work and enjoy it and let it unfold and not run ahead of yourself, you know, because this fame thing is definitely a takes you over. Yeah, do you think they believe their own publicity too much? I think so, and, and it happens so quickly as well. You see, I, I had that 10 years to go out and work. Before you had a big hit. Before I had a yeah. hit. Um, <clears throat> it's keeping your feet on the ground and believing in what you do and not letting people sidetrack you into being what you're not. Yeah. I, that's what I would... Stay true to yourself. Stay true. Yeah. So tell me what it is about the partnership you have with Carlos that, that works so well. I mean, it's, as you say, 30 years you've been working together now. Well, Carmelo's an amazing guitarist. Uh, he's worked with Bill Wyman, lots of people, done lots of projects. We met when I was 47. Yeah. And that was the point when I thought, I've got to do my own music. You know, I've got to get real here. And um, 
he's just fantastic and he, he, he does all our arrangements and he produces our albums and we musically we, we seem to work yeah um, and like I said earlier I think working at this level I can hear my vocals on stage because with a big band you know and in a big stadium you can't really hear very much you know you're just relying on you know ear pl ear, in ear plugs yeah. or monitors you know yeah um, but it it's one of those intangible things that just works musically, you know. Yeah. And so what sort of material are you writing together now? I'm sorry, I called him Carlos, he's Carmelo. Of yeah, that's fine. Yeah. What sort of material are you writing together now? Well, um, it, it's very grown up in the sense of I don't write love songs with baby in them anymore, do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I don't particularly like pop. I like music these days. I like uh, real instruments, um, organic sounding. So the songs are about the journey of life, because I, all my lyrics are uh, really come from myself and my experiences. I don't think I can write in the way maybe Kate Bush can by reading a book and taking a subject. I just have to write from emotion. Mm. Mm. Uh, there's a song I wrote called She's Smiling Now about my mother, um, who was a wonderful lady, very kind. And there's a line in the song, uh, it's never too late to fall in love with life again. I'm very proud of it. So that's the kind of content. Some of the songs are fun as well, but it's the, it's the truth of the music that I like. Mm. Yeah. We mentioned, let's go back again, because we mentioned uh, that this evening, Elton is... Yeah. You've stayed very good friends with Elton, haven't you, all, all through the years? Oh, he's, he's, he's amazing. Every time I'm, I'm unwell, because I was a little bit unwell yes. earlier this year, I get the phone call. You all right? <laughs> I'm keeping my eye on you, you know. He rang me on his birthday because he found out I wasn't very well. But I don't see him, I don't mix in his circle because it's an unreal life, let's face it. I mean, my life's very normal. But he, it's a true friendship and I would say he's, you know, of all the people who've touched me in my life, he, he's definitely well up there, you know. Yeah. So will you be, you won't be at Glastonbury this evening, no. but will you be watching? I will. I can't wait to see who's going to be on. I mean, this is the thing, isn't it? He says he's going to have four people on. But we don't know who they are. No, it's you a secret. I've no idea. Who do you think it might be? No, honestly, I don't know. I heard Billy Joel was in London. It might be him. Yeah. Dua Lipa. He worked with in LA. Lady Gaga, I think, is in yeah, the mix. Who isn't knows? She? I mean, yeah. But you're looking he, forward to it. He loves evening. to mix it up. He does, doesn't he? So <laughs> you're looking forward to it this evening. I am absolutely. Yeah. Well, you yeah. and thousands of others too, I think. Yeah. Thank you very much, Kiki. It's been such a delight to be able to see you. When you came in, you said, "I'm going to pretend we're having a cup of coffee in the lounge." That's, That's what right. I've done. Fantastic. Massive thanks to you, Kiki. Thank you.